the year of the upsets. Dante's Boxing Nation, what's going on, guys? Although I had the privilege to interview Chris Algieri before this fight on my radio show, and he showed so much confidence, which I felt was really sincere because sometimes people say it, but they're not sincere. Although he showed that type of confidence, I'll tell you this. If I was talking to a psychic and a psychic told me that Chris Aldry will get knocked down twice in the first round, have his eye swollen and have his eye damn near shut by the middle of the fight while having a busted nose and still out punch Ruslan Provotnikov throughout the fight and win the fight, I would say get the fuck out of here. First things first, big congrats to the new WBO light welterweight champion, Chris Algieri. Now, later on, I'm going to talk about the ridiculous commentary and how they were judging the fight. Of course, you know, the leader of the pack, Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman, always following his lead. But uh, before I even talk about that, let me talk about this excellent performance that Chris Algieri put on this weekend. Now, what really made this performance so impressive is the fact that Chris had no amateur pedigree, okay? He had no amateur experience. He had nothing but a kickboxing background. And yet his boxing IQ was superior to the majority of fighters that have been in the ring with Ruslan Provotnikov, including Provotnikov himself, who also has a very extensive amateur background. I mean, the little things that Chris was doing in the ring, it really, it was really impressive. He had an excellent jab. I was thinking that he was about to get murdered when he was when he had his back against the ropes, but he knew how to slip a, the majority of punches. I mean, the only time that Ruslan was really successful is when he was able to land the left hook. But he was landing it so few far in between that it wasn't really effective. I mean, Chris really showed that he was a student of the sweet science. He was just doing little things in there I would not expect a guy who has a kickboxing you know, background to do. I mean, Chris was really using his brain in there. The man damn near looked like Andre Ward in the fight. I mean, he would do little subtle things that I really like, like, for example... When Ruzan Provodnikov got close to him and when Chris kind of felt his back getting close to the ropes, what he would do is he would dip in and he would smother Ruzan Provodnikov, but then catch him with a quick uppercut and maybe a left hook to the body and then he would get back out and go back to his jab. You know, he was doing a lot of impressive things. As the fight progressed, he started to find a home with the left hooks to the body. He was just frustrating and, and really exposed Ruslan Provodnikov to really make him look very one-dimensional. And don't get me wrong, even though we knew that Ruslan Provodnikov was somewhat of a one-dimensional fighter, let's face it, his one dimension that he has has been a serious problem for the majority of opponents. I mean, look at Provodnikov versus Alvarado versus Tim Bradley. And then you compare that to what Chris Algieri was able to do against Provodnikov you have to really give Chris a lot of credit. I see a lot of potential in uh, Chris. I found the conversation that Max Kellerman and Andre Ward had earlier on in the fight to be somewhat of a very interesting conversation. Because Max Kellerman was basically talking about rules of Provotnikov and how he imposes his will on his opponents. Like, for example, when he fought against Tim Bradley, Max Kellerman said that he believed that even in a rematch, Tim Bradley still wouldn't be able to outbox Ruslan Provodnikov because Ruslan Provodnikov won't let you. In, in other words, Ruslan Provodnikov, he's going to force you to fight the way that he wants to fight. And Andre Ward, he basically disagreed with that to a certain extent by saying that Tim Bradley was able to you know, box when he wanted to in the first fight with Provodnikov. And while this conversation has taken place, it's funny because Chris Algieri, he's actually outboxing Ruslan Provodnikov, and he's not being forced to fight the fight that Provodnikov would prefer. So that right there completely proved that Max Kellerman, he was out of the loop, and Andre Ward, he had it right.
he understood the sweet science. You know, that's why I like the fact that Andre Ward is there. I don't know how long it's going to last, but it's very hard, once again, to, to work next to someone like a Jim Lampley and a Max Kellerman because eventually you become hypnotized or you almost feel like you're doing something wrong if you disagree with Jim Lampley, especially when it's Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman together. And to give you a perfect example of that, throughout this fight, I'll tell you right now, Chris Algieri, he completely outboxed Ruzan Provotnikov throughout this fight. As far as I'm concerned, this fight wasn't even close. I would say being generous, being really generous, you could have gave uh, Provotnikov about four rounds, but no more than four rounds. But throughout the fight, if you listen to Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman, they were making it seem like it was a complete blowout. And Steve Weisfeld, the, um, you know, the HBO judge, they made it seem like this was a wipeout. It wasn't even close. And what was funny was they were going back and forth arguing on how many points that Provotnikov was actually up. I thought it was absurd. I thought the majority of the HBO commentating team was divorced from reality throughout that fight. The only people that actually understood and got it were Ruslan Provotnikov's own trainer, Freddie Roach, and, of course, Andre Ward. Freddie Roach, he's constantly telling uh, Ruslan Provotnikov later on in the fight, you're losing this fight, and you need a knockout to win. Later on, he would say that the fight is very close, but at one point, he told him, you need a knockout to win, okay? So he understood how close this fight was. He understood that his fighter was probably behind. Andre Ward was another one who understood that Algieri was winning the fight. He was easily outboxing uh, Ruzan Provotnikov. Now, I go back to when I told you guys that sometimes when you sit next to people like Jim Lampley, who's so powerful, you feel uncomfortable disagreeing with them. Because Andre Ward, he's saying throughout the fight later on, he says, you know, I truly believe that Chris Algieri is winning the fight. He was the only person that had enough balls to say it. But what was funny was after the decision was read by uh, Michael Buffer, Jim Lampley still makes it clear that he thinks that Ruzan Provotnikov won the fight. Then he says, what are your thoughts on this, Andre Ward? And now Andre Ward is saying, well, you know what? I, I, I got to go back and um, watch the fight again. But then once again, at the end of the conversation, Andre Ward, he did say it again. He said, maybe I'm in the minority, but I think... Chris Algieri, he put on a boxing clinic tonight, okay? Once again, man, it just seems like people who are around Max Kellerman and Jim Lampley, they feel uncomfortable. I told you guys, Emmanuel Stewart used to be the same way, and now Andre Ward is that way. Roy Jones, he has already been basically compromised to corroborate almost every single thing that Jim Lampley said. Hopefully, Andre Ward doesn't become infected as well, but I would not be surprised if a year from now, we hear Andre Ward talking pretty much just like Roy Jones and the late Emmanuel Stewart started to eventually. You know, it just doesn't make sense to me how Jim Lampley and Max can be so far off because all of the statistics or all of the stats favored Chris Algieri. He landed the most punches. He threw the most punches. He had a higher connect percentage and although the official judges don't have access to the punch stats you didn't need access to punch stats to see what was going on in this fight Ruzan Provodnikov would land one good left hook damn near around okay maybe two if he's lucky but that's pretty much how the fight went and when Ruzan Provodnikov wasn't landing a left hook he wasn't landing anything else he was completely frustrated and completely outboxed in this fight he was completely exposed. But I'll tell you one thing about Provodnikov. I still believe that he is a dangerous threat to anyone. Once again, man, I am so impressed with Chris Algieri's performance over Ruzan Provodnikov. And the reason why is because I actually had the privilege to watch Chris Algieri spar for a couple of weeks because I was taking my son over to his gym where he was training at the Randy Couture gym so that my son can get in some sparring. He was sparring with the same kid for a couple of weeks over there. But when I was watching Chris Algieri spar, I tell you one thing, man, it is very misleading watching someone spar because sometimes you'll see someone spar and they look like an animal 
And then they get in the ring and they look like garbage. And then other times it's the other way around where a guy, he doesn't look really that impressive sparring. And then all of a sudden, once he gets in front of them lights, he just shines. And, you know, he looks like a complete different fighter. And this was the situation with Chris Algieri. I'll be straight, you know, I, I seen him spar with some kids and he didn't really look like extremely impressive. He didn't look like he could do any better than Mike Alvarado did against Ruzan Provodnikov. But man, once Algieri got in front of those lights, it was a whole different game. So congratulations to Chris Algieri once again. This changes the landscape of the junior welterweight division, probably, and the welterweight division. Uh, Chris Algieri is a serious player in both of those divisions. I wouldn't mind seeing Algieri versus a Juan Marquez, a Manny Pacquiao, especially because they don't mind fighting that 140. There's a lot of fights that could be made. Hell, even against Danny Garcia, you know, in Algieri, that would be a good fight. So there's a lot of fights that could be made now that Algieri is in the mix. So that's pretty much all I got to say on this one, guys. I'm on to the next one.